It's all about the firmness. Finn Diesel would say The Rock's former little buddy in crime. Well, The Rock committed a crime last night when he slapped the teeth out of Cody Rhodes' mouth. But how? Well, big nose. Triple H respond today. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling for your SmackDown preview. Last night, shit actually happened in wrestling. Wrestling was interesting. Wrestling was entertaining for, like, the first time in a long time. We had actual stars. We had Triple H, with The Rock, with CM Punk on the panel, with Michael Cole and Pat McAfee. All right, Big E was there as well, but, I mean, whatever, right? I'm not going to shit too much on Big E. He did okay. Don't get me wrong. We had a couple of mid-carders up on the stage, like Cody Rhodes, Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, but you can't have everything your own way. And it was actually fun. It was actually nice to see The Rock turn heel and get in Cody's face, and then The Rock and Roman Reigns teaming up, standing side by side in the bloodline, and Seth Rollins came to Cody Rhodes' aid while wearing his wife's clothes. So yeah, it was an interesting WrestleMania press conference, but the reason we mention it is because Triple H going to be on the show tonight and he is going to discuss the fallout from last night's offence. It was a fun pre-show uh, pre of WrestleMania, it was a fun event and you know what, it's the first time in ages I can come out and say I stayed up and watched wrestling, I wasn't bored, I wasn't disappointed, it entertained me, it was intriguing and it made you want to tune into tonight, there's only one problem with that, two of the guys that were there last night are not going to be here tonight. And that is a damn shame. We've got Big Nose, Triple H, and Cody's guaranteed to be here. We know for a fact Roman won't be here. As for The Rock, well, I'm not too sure. Will he be here? I'm not going to bet my no, money. No, he won't. The Rock won't be here. I mean, Triple H will be here. Maybe Cody will be here. Who's, the Ro who's Triple H responding to? Rock was trying to suggest that Cody was out of line, but for me, the, the Bloodline are the ones that are fucking out of line. I mean, Roman Reigns says that Dusty Rhodes was irrelevant. And then Cody responds and The Rock starts crying. He calls the Cody Rhodes fans crybaby. Cody crybabies? Yet. <laughs> yet Cody Rhodes suggests that Roman Reigns' family would be disappointed in him. And then The Rock fucking almost bursts into tears and takes it bad. You speak about his family. You speak about my family. You speak about his blood. You speak about my blood. Look, let's be, let's be completely honest because we don't lie in this channel. The Rock's family is fucking shit. Listen, I don't care who his dad and his grandfather were, they weren't any good, right? They weren't top guys, they weren't top stars. And as much as I don't really like Dusty Rhodes, I would put Dusty Rhodes above anybody in the Rocks family. Yeah. As so, much... Yeah, I mean, I absolutely got to agree. I mean, you think of the Rocks family, I think his dad, because... He is a wee bit memorable in the sense, like, you remember that match he had with Rocket Mania? Uh, you've got Three Minute Warning, Puerto Rico, obviously. Umaga was a part of that. You've got the Usos, you've got Roman Reigns and The Rock, but it's everything like this side of the century. All the other people are jobbers. Yeah, let's not pretend that, oh, The Rock, The Bloodline, we come from this great family. No, I mean, if they're going to say Dusty Rhodes was irrelevant, then what does that say about The Rock's dad and The Rock's grandfather? Because yeah. they, they certainly weren't as relevant as Dusty Rhodes was. Anyway... Triple H is going to respond to that tonight. What will he say? Who knows? Uh, we also have Bailey talking about her departure from damage control, so I'm assuming that's official. Obviously, I know that her and the, the Japanese ladies aren't going to be teaming together, but I thought maybe Bailey would keep the rights to damage control, so I guess going forward, damage control is just free Japanese women. I'm surprised they didn't change the name. I guess if Vince was there, he'd call them, I don't know, like the Japanese... Trojan Warriors or something like that, but maybe Damage Control is just going to be Eel Sky, Asuka, and uh, the other one, Carrie Sane. But see, the problem with this is, how do you go for like The Rock and Triple H, like you said, to this? Like, no one cares about this. No one cares about Bel Air's qualifier match. No one cares about, oh, Pete Dunne and Bates square off against Champa and Gargano. Who Wait. fucking cares? I want The Rock. Way to waste the rest of the preview. Nah, fuck the rest of the preview. This is why wrestling won't be good, right? Because they actually give you something good, and then you're having to wade through fucking shite for the next two months just to get mania. And it looks like you're not even going to get the Rocket Mania. I don't even know what they're going to do. You see, if you knew tonight the Rock and Reigns were going to be there with Triple H and Cody, I'd be feeling a wee bit more up to the 1 o'clock a.m. schedule in the morning. But see the fact that Cody's going to come out, what you want to talk about, and then you're going to just hear Triple H breathing through the back before you see him because his nose is that fucking big. And it's going to go, Ugh, Cody. Uh. <laughs> and you, oh, man, it sucks. Wrestling's fucking bitch. They give you something decent and then you just know it's going to go downhill. 
I'm the bestest. I'm going to be the bestest, the fastest, and eliminate some championess. Fuck off, Bel Air. Bel End. Hate them all. Anyway, Bailey talks about her departure from Damage Control. Why was Bailey you know, at the press conference last night? Can someone tell me that legit? I mean, she won the Rumble. She should have been there. Instead, they gave a spot to Bianca Belair. You know what, right? They, they, they should have scrapped everyone else at the press conference apart from the four guys that were out there. And even though Rollins was a spare dick, at least like he's there for Cody's decision. What was the point of wheeling out Belair and the other two women? That is just equality. That is just pushing the women down her throat. Who care about those three? There was no reaction from the crowd. Yeah, nobody gave a shit, to be honest. So, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, we have Dunn and Bait squaring off against Champa and Gargano for the right to challenge the Judgment Day at Elimination Chamber. What an awful tag team match this is, and the fact that one of these teams are going to go to Elimination Chamber to challenge for the tag team titles, it just goes to show you how poor the tag team division is. Uh, like, it's almost like... <laughs> Triple H is wet dream this, isn't it? I mean, yep. this is like it's NXT, like NXT yeah. black and gold error... Just these Champ and Gargano, Dunn and Bait, four fucking guys that just will not be remembered. When they hang up the gloves and when they hang up the boots or whatever they fucking wear, their little fucking tighty whitey trunks. Speedos. Nobody's going to be bringing these guys back. They're not going to be feud as legends. They're, they're not, not going to be dishing out trophies in Saudi Arabia. They're not going to be getting offered to come back at WrestleMania 50 and Wrestle and Main Event Night 2. You know, none of that shit is going to be happening with these guys. So, yeah, no, for me... Terrible, terrible choice. I'm not saying the tag team division is stacked, but I, I find it hard to believe that you couldn't get a better set of tag teams, one for Raw, one for SmackDown. I'm just no buying it that there's not a better set of tag teams that could be competing tonight for the right to challenge the Judgment Day. Yeah, DIY just won on Raw to become number one contender, so they've just whipped this match out of thin air. Uh, Dunn and Bate also won on SmackDown to become number well, one contenders. I didn't watch SmackDown to be fair. I, see on Raw, they just said, no, wait, so hold on, why two number one contenders? Why not just have a... Why have, why not have the Judgment Day defend twice in one night? Because the best team for Raw versus the best team for SmackDown. Yeah, but the Judgment Days have got two sets of fucking belts. How about we work towards, uh, oh, I don't know, two sets of tag belts on two different brands instead of the same old... Fucking look how pish these tag look at the look how pish the tag title division is. I will give the Rock and Roman Reigns the fucking belt. And, and, and you want two sets of belts? Give Rock and Reigns the belt. Wait, 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 why don't we just give Dunn and Bate one belt and give Champ and Gargano the other set? Would, yo, would you not rather Rock and Reigns have the tag belts? I know they're gonna go up against Dunn and Bate. <laughs> no, but well, yeah, I mean, I, I know I get the point, right? But I would rather the illusion that the tag belts are being held by these two guys that are part timers and sit at home rather than these bums battle for it. That would add prestige to the tag titles. I don't give a shit what anyone says, man. I just don't see. Even Imperium, they're boring, like. But I mean, how can two guys that hang about with Gunfer not be better than these two teams? Just for the pure fact that they're in Gunfer stable. And he's had the IC belt for over 600 days. What? What is... Miz and R-Truth, why can't they be in this? Yeah. Wait, R-Truth wants to join the Judgment Day? It seems like the perfect fucking match for me. They've already did awesome Truth, though, against the Judgment Day on Raw. Aye, well, that's a throwaway match. They should have built up to the, ch the Elimination well, Chamber. Not, maybe they'll do it at me, anyway. Well, I'd rather see a repeat. I'd rather see a rematch of that than this shit. Same. Anyway, there could have been a better match than this, but done, bait. Don't really care. And Bianca Belair takes on Mee Chin in an Elimination Chamber qualifying match. Oh, who's going match. to win that one? Uh, I mean, I would bet every single penny that I own, and there's not many pennies, to be honest. Take on my Mee Chin and call me Chris Benoit. Who's winning this one? Uh, well, let's get into the match. I'm, I'm not going to talk too much about Belair first. I don't Mee know, Chin. Simon. Who's going to win this one? I'm, uh, I'm going to go with Bianca Belair. Oh, you know... After a long thought, I've, I've, I've gave the nod to Bel Air. I was going to go Bel Air, but the Good Brothers could be out there. They could be the difference maker. So I'm actually going to go with Meechin to win this. Yes, but remember, the Good Brothers are men and they can't physically put hands on Bianca Bel Air. Oh, Bel Air looks like a man, so I mean, maybe they'll, maybe they'll uh, draw the line. I know, but then Montez Ford and Dawkins will just come out and save Bel Air, so... That evens up the odds. Oh, yeah, that is Triple H, but I'll have to go with Bel Air. You know, because if there's two men, then you've got to have fucking another two men. Just like when Scarlet Bordeaux gets involved, then you got to bring out b -Vap. So, yeah, we're both going for Bianca Bel Air. Don and Bate versus Champa and Gargano. I'm going for Champa and Gargano. 
I just refuse to believe that Don and Bate are getting a title match. Not that Gargano and Ciampa are great by any means, but I just think that they've got a little bit more experience. I think they've done a little bit more on the main roster. I, I think they look a little bit more credible. I don't know if that's the. I don't know if that's the. I don't know if I should be saying that, but I, I don't. Yeah. I don't like Champa, right? But he's got a beard and he's got half a look to him. I mean, Champa looks like a bit like cheese. It, it could be Triple H's like wee nephew or something. Can he? It could be Big Cheese's wee nephew. It could be anyway. I, I'm going for Champa and Gargano. Swiss Bliss, Swiss Cheese. Uh, yeah, I'm going with Champa and Gargano. Uh, right. So that's it. We're both going for the same matches. As for Bailey, she'll probably just talk because he'll Sky can't. That's pretty much it, isn't it? And then Triple H will address the fallout. Will he call it Cody Rhodes? Will he be pissed at Cody Rhodes? Will he be pissed at The Rock? Or will he just come out and go, I am the game. Watch WrestleMania 40. I don't want Vince to take a shit on my head. We'll find out tonight, guys, on SmackDown. Let us know what you think down below. Any closing thoughts here? Uh, my closing thoughts are, right, you always refer to if I leave you on double one or, uh, you know, the blacks behind the white. See Bailey trying to work a WrestleMania program with someone that can't speak English and try and fight her way into night one's main event? What what fucking odds has she got? She's not even that good to begin with, right? I think she's a mid-carder in the women's division. Like, she is working with her hands tied behind her back trying to get this press she. What? A mid card on a women's division. I just she was in the four horsemen, I think she's by far the weakest. I don't think I don't think the women's division's strong enough for Bailey to be a mid carder. I really don't. I get your point, but my point is she's not quite what I think I, I couldn't see ba well, I mean I was about to say I can't see Bailey holding the belt for months, but I mean this person that can't speak English did, so Well, how do you define how do how do we define a mid card on the women's division? Uh, let's say, so you split the brands, would you say if you're in the top five women on either show, you're a main event? No, main I, event -er? what I mean is... Like, no, but what is a mid-carder? It's, like, it's like with Cody Rhodes, I think he's a mid-carder, he's been in the main event. I feel like there's some... No, but in this era, Cody Rhodes is, I think, 100% a main event. -er. But overall, for me, he's a mid-carder. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, that, that's what I feel like with Bailey in the, the women's main event scene. I think there's certain women, right, like Becky Lynch, Rhea Ripley... I know they're probably going to have a match, right? And Bel Air, Sasha Banks, Charlotte, Ronda Rousey. I think those sort of people could main event like Mania Night One. And these days, you're just not going to bat an eyelid. I just think Bailey, just going against I you Sky is just not Mania worthy, man. It's not even philosophy worthy. Think they get the pre show? I mean, I might get the pre show. Honestly, good luck to Bailey. He's having to make chicken salad out of chicken shit, as Undertaker once said. Maybe they should... That's another reason why they shouldn't have had her pick EO Sky so early. Why didn't Why didn't they have... Well, wait. It's not, well, I'll tell you why. It's because they can't trust EO. But see, they could have had Bailey make her choice at that press conference. Yeah. But that would just be a fucking mess. Yeah, because EO Sky would be like, oh, no, no, no. You know, so that, that just wouldn't work. But yeah, I mean, the longer it takes Bailey to pick, then... The, the less you're relying on EO Sky to hold up her end of the bargain in a feud. Look, we'll see what happens tonight. Smackdown, uh, will it be a good show? Uh, I just don't expect it to be good based on what we've seen the other night. But anyway, we'll find out. Catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.